Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 112, Motivating Teens. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my ambitious and energetic co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Short week this week. We had Monday off. Yep. Uh, how's your week going so far? It's going all right. Nothing too crazy going on. I know you had a big test today. Did you do good on that? Yep. Awesome. Uh, so today we're talking about motivating teens. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to discuss the challenges involved in motivating and keeping teens motivated. We'll look at some of the challenges of motivation for teens, and we'll talk about some of the long-term implications of a lack of motivation. Then we'll take a look at a few motivational strategies that might prove effective in inspiring your teen. And finally, we'll talk about the seven secrets to motivating teens before we hear Madison's closing remarks on the subject. But before we do that, I do want to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, or you can get video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and pretty much any place you can get a podcast. I would also invite folks to give us your feedback. We'd love to uh, hear how we're doing. We're looking for show suggestions, topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash podcast. On Instagram, we're at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all these on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Ready to get started? I think I am. All righty. <clears throat> so, the challenges of motivating teens. Uh, the research for the first segment here comes from publicschoolreview.com. They say teens today are confronted with new and unfamiliar issues when compared with teenagers in any recent or long-term long past. Many parents struggle to identify the catalyst or strategies to stimulate and motivate their teens. Many parents struggle to connect with their kids because their experiences are so far from most adults' uh, frame of reference. Today's teens are faced with choices and circumstances their parents didn't face. They live in a world where it requires a security badge to enter a high school in some cases, where we never faced that as, as kids. Mm -hmm. Where they compete scholastically with uh, other students with a 4.9 GPA where classmates cheat using cell phone technology and where world events and economic issues make it scary to comp contemplate the future. A loss or lack of motivation in teens is often symptomatic of far greater issues, such as a lack of self-confidence, a lack of self-esteem, and so forth. Parents are challenged to boost teens' feelings of enthusiasm and drive in an ever-evolving environment of challenges where there are long-term consequences to a lack of motivation. So with that broad opening statement and the challenges both teens and parents face, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the greatest, how would you measure your motivation scholastically at this point in time? Um, I'd say probably... 
9.5. That's pretty motivated. Yeah, um, a lot of that is more or less the self-pressure that I put on myself for it. Um, and other times it's the my creative side, and other times it's just wanting to get a good grade or the influence you guys have on me. What do you think are some of the key demotivational factors that teens face today? Um... Probably the feeling of laziness, procrastination being the main thing, because that's pretty much the opposite. Pretty much, if you have procrastination, you're not entirely motivated during. Why that do time. today what I can put off until tomorrow? Yeah, that's basically yeah. kind of what I'm pretty sure is one of the main causes, along with the ones you mentioned. Um, cause teens to lack motivation. Now, is that something that you yourself experience from time to time, despite the fact that you are as motivated as you are? I definitely say I don't think I suffer from it scholastically. There are maybe some instances that I, that might happen. Um, uh, but I definitely suffer from it in pretty much most other facets except my academics, which, like, we had... Like, it was kind of funny. We had a journal entry for ELA where we talked about procrastination and how we feel about how we procrastinate and things we procrastinated on. And when I, fi when I finally looked at it, I realized I pretty much procrastinate on almost everything else besides school, and that's probably kind of the opposite to most teens. Well, and that's a good thing. But what are some of the things that you tend to procrastinate on? Um... Probably my own self-projects that I like to make. Um, I've mentioned before how I like doing art and movie making and writing stories. A lot of that is sometimes the things I procrastinate on. Other times it's my chores. Um, especially can, especially laundry um, because you're kind of waiting for it. And right. a lot of times I might not be motivated to flip the laundry, but I still try to keep a con as it as consistent as I can. So in these instances where you do get demotivated, it sounds mostly like it's chore based or, or, you know, hobby based demotivation. Do you f suffer any consequences from being demotivated in those situations? Um, I mean, for chores, I probably get a talk from you guys or laundry misses you because I mean, you haven't done that in a little while, but you really, you always mention to me, hey, maybe you should check the laundry. And it used to be the phrase, laundry misses you, and honestly, that was kind of, um, what, you know, you would say. Um, well, and to help that along, we did wind up buying new, uh, washing, a new washer and dryer that actually, like, notifies you. <laughs> You know, when yeah. when laundry needs to be flipped. So it's I kind of had to stop doing that at that point. Yeah, true. Um, for the creative aspect, I guess the consequences is just the fact that I'm not putting out as much of the content I would have. And I'm really kind of losing track on projects. And, like, I start new projects when I haven't finished older ones. So I kind of get this self the consequence of, hey, maybe you should finish this, and without that motivation to finish it, it will never be finished, and thus I will never be able to see it completed. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about what it, what happens when you lack motivation and what some of the long-term implications are. Why don't you tell us about that? So experts suggest most of the problems of education are problems of motivation. When a child is self-motivated, the teacher cannot keep them from learning. Students who lack motivation often display a gap between their abilities and their academic output and effort. While this can appear at a very young age, including many elementary grades and ages, the lack of motivation is most strongly evident as students transition from middle school to from middle and high school. As students lose motivation at a young age, their inability to perform and their desire to achieve becomes a learning behavior, a learned behavior. Uh, these students are often labeled as underachievers, resulting in a student's loss of self-esteem and confidence. A highly intelligent teen may be denied entrance into honor classes and urged to take 
either general or vod- vocational vocational classes because of la- of a lackluster middle school performance. Such a situation easily becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When an adolescent lacks motivation, the end result is often a teen lacking self-confidence, a teen with a bad attitude, or per- or perhaps even a teen with behavioral problems. With behavior problems. When parents are confronted with issues relating to teens' behavior and motivation, there's a variety of experts suggested strategies to help boost students' performance and attitude. So it's interesting that they talk about this largely in the form of scholastic consequences. Uh, when I was in high school, my last two years in high school, uh, I had been labeled as uh, an underachiever myself, and I was scholastically, but there were a number of factors that went into that that caused that, one being the fact that I, my father was sick with cancer, and, and I spent a number of days out of school taking him to uh, doctor's appointments and so forth. Uh, the other one was the classes that I enjoyed, like my business classes and such, and my computer classes, I was very motivated, and I excelled in those. It was the other classes, you know, English wasn't really a strong subject for me, and the math classes weren't strong subjects for me. So I kind of backed off on those somewhat um, and and sort of dedicated myself towards the stuff that I knew was going to be career path type of things for me. Um, With this in mind... Are there subjects that you have that you don't feel you're particularly motivated in where there are other subjects that you're more motivated in? Um, um, I'd probably say that, hmm, hmm, I've never really thought about it like that. Um, because you're in all honors classes going into high school pretty much all the ones you could be in yeah so you're obviously motivated to a certain extent to to be in all of those but is there a particular subject that you're not that motivated in that you take because you have to maybe um that's what french class was for me french i had to, i had to, you had to take a year of foreign language and i didn't want to take any foreign language because i didn't think i was going to need it but you had to pick one and ironically enough i picked French not because I had any type of affinity for it, but because there was this girl that I liked who was in French class, and I had hoped to get in her class, but so many people had taken French class the year I took it that they split it into two groups, and she wasn't in my group, so hmm. <laughs> kind of that plan kind of backfired on me. Um, I guess maybe um, I'm not See, I really don't know. Like, it would, it's between, I guess, ELA and math somewhat. Okay. Like, I feel as though I'm slightly more motivated in math than I am in ELA. Not to say that I'm not motivated in ELA, it's just, technically it's the only class I have right now that's not an advanced, for eighth grade at least. Um... So I'd probably maybe go with ELA because there are definite, there are like, mm, maybe not. I I really don't know. So you're equally motivated in all your classes then you're saying? For the most part, maybe like. Even gym class. Well, I mean. (laughs) I could pick that one right out of a hat. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um I mean I still, you know, do the work for gym class. Right. I guess maybe because I don't actually really enjoy physical activity, I can probably s- and that it's not really one of my most important classes. Like I still make sure I get the assignments turned in and I get motivated to do the exercises that um they need us to do, but really I'm guessing at this point I'm kind of just doing the bare minimum. And, and that's, that's really what demotivated people do. They get the job done at the, at the, at the bottom of the, the requirement level. So let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about the motivational strategies that teens can try. For over 
over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking teen motivation. So there's four basic, um, I don't know what you call them, strategies, philosophies for motivation that the article talks about. The first is self-motivate. Many experts assert that teens are most strongly encouraged and supported when they are forced to motivate themselves. Teens can learn how to motivate themselves by engaging in student clubs, groups, or organizations that foster positive peer influence solutions. For example, some clubs focus on interests that may connect with a teen's desired future career. In this case, students can determine their interests and goals and then can simultaneously encounter clearer catalysts that drive their motivation and focus. If a student realizes he or she needs to attend college in order to achieve his or her dream, then the teen may encounter a new self-motivation to strive and succeed in school. Now, this is clearly the, the field or the category that you're in with self-motivation. Would you agree? I would think so. Now, do you feel that you're motivating yourself with long-term goals in mind or just to be as good as you can right now in your in your classes? I think it should it's kind of a combination of both. A lot of it is definitely like hey, you should really make sure that you get all A's um in school because you need to keep up the record and such. But another part is that hey, you're going to be you're going into high school and higher grades. You're probably going to be going into college. Academics is important. You need to keep up the good work. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and I would assume that it would be a kind of a multifaceted approach. The fact that you are looking at the long-term goals, I think, is a, a testament to your planning skill at this point. What's the next thing that we have? The next thing we have is camps and courses. In addition to teens engaging in clubs and activities that stimulate a self-motivated self-motivation process, there are also many summer camps and teen-based courses. These may focus on teaching teens the basics of independence of independent living such as budgeting, handling a checkbook, uh, obtaining a car loan, finding and maintaining an apartment, using credit wisely, and community participation. By teaching teens the more important and complex lessons of life after high school, many teens are able to realize how their current choices impact their long-term success. As a result, teens are again able to learn how to self-motivate with the guidance of expert sources and opportunities. And one of the things that I've heard high school kind of criticized about, and a lot of parents you know, I've talked to have, have had the same criticism, and that's the fact that high school doesn't get you ready to live in the real world. And, and by that, I mean these um, basic things like this, like, like keeping a budget or managing a checkbook or going to get a car loan. You know, how do you go get an apartment? How do you sign a lease on an apartment? Like these things aren't really dealt with in high school. So when teens encounter these things in um camps and courses and stuff like that that don't normally cover the stuff in high school it then they can then see what that end goal looks like so when you go through and you learn how to balance a checkbook it teaches you so many different things about budgeting and what it's like to pay bills and, and knowing that 
If you only have X number of dollars coming in, you can't spend more than that, you know, or else the budget's not going to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, so camps like that. Now you've done camps, but your camps, your your summer camps, have been more along the lines of recreational. Except for last year, though. Last year you did a couple of online camps that were they were recreational, but there was an educational aspect to them. How did those camps work out for you? They worked out kind of. They actually worked out pretty well. There was this one science camp that was a that I was a part of, where they were doing various science experiments that you could do at home, and they not only did the cool science experiments, but they also taught you the physics of it and how exactly the experiment was able to go. Now, was that something being was that being a part of that? Was that something that helped to motivate you more? in the science side of things when you went back to school? I mean, it definitely gave me um, an appreciation for science, and I'd always kind of been a science nerd in a way. Um, I always did find science quite fascinating, um, and um, I did enjoy, and doing science now and doing it at the start of the year, I did enjoy science, and I've tried to um, take in all the information I can and you know a lot of that I definitely think it did give me a bigger appreciation for science so it sounds like that probably helped to keep the motivation going over the summer where you know we wouldn't normally be doing sciencey type things unless we go to museums or something yeah so the next thing that they talk about is mentor programs Many public high schools have implemented mentor programs for students where high-achieving students volunteer to support students who are struggling. Oftentimes, these mentors can help fellow teens with homework or can just serve as a troubled teen's friend and companion as a mentor can. Uh, as a, I'm sorry, as a mentor can help a teen to constructively work through problems, discuss issues, and pressure that student's discuss issues and pressures that students encounter in an out boy I'm having a hard time reading this script today <sighs> a mentor can help a teen to constructively work through problems discuss issues and pressures that students encounter in and outside of school and so forth this avenue is a positive alternative to forcing students to deal with struggles on their own, especially when parents are finding it difficult to connect with your teen. Now, given your scholastic achievement at this point in time, I would expect under this system, you would probably be more of a mentor rather than someone who would be mentor. What do you think? I definitely actually would probably agree with that. Um, I have younger friends, and a lot of times whenever they were having issues, whether it be scholastically or emotionally, like they got into a fight, I would normally be the one who would help them with a problem they didn't understand or help them resolve a conflict. Um, I also remember that in sixth grade, um, that we act- there could actually... Um, I've definitely... There was actually a certain mentor role that you could take, and I took it a couple of times, and I definitely feel as though I would make a good mentor. Now, do you, in your experience in in mentoring other kids, do you find that they were more motivated through the process itself? Um, I definitely made sure to try and motivate um, anyone that I helped. I wouldn't, like... It was kind of how you would sometimes help me, like if I had a, there was a problem I didn't understand. You'd help me work through it, not directly give me the answer, and then I'd let them be motivated and use that to at least hopefully motivate them to find the answer on their own. That's a very good point. The old adage of teach a man to fish and don't just give him the fish, right? Yep. What's the last one that we have? The last one we have is honoring and encouraging. Parents can also support... uh, Apparently, I'm not the only one today. (laughs) Yeah, I'm also having a pretty hard time with the script. Parents can also support unmotivated teens by helping their teenager identify their strengths and abilities. In doing so, parents should... 
simultaneously simultaneously encourage their teen's achievements while supporting their teenager with enthusiasm and optimism. If we, if we are to motivate adolescents to learn what it is the... What is in the uh, curriculum. What is in the curriculum... We must honor their learning styles, help them discover their unique abilities, and give them an appro- a <laughs> <laughs> and give them appropriate tools for successful achievement. You know, I'm glad I'm not the only one who struggled <laughs> with this script today. I don't know what it is. Maybe I wrote it up wrong. Maybe it's the format or what. <laughs> Usually we're, we're much better than this. Yes. So, yes, honoring and encouraging. So if we want to motivate our teens, you have to, you have to do it in a manner in which there is recognition. Um, you know, when you do something well, like, for instance, you bring home A's in, in, in all of your subjects uh, at the end of a marking period, you get a reward for that. Do you find that reward motivating? Definitely. Um, not only, like, of course, the main motivating factor is me pushing myself, but the smaller reward of you guys congratulating me is definitely something that encourages me to keep going. And it's important to be, to be nurturing in how you motivate people. It's not just a matter of patting people on the back when they do something good. But if they fail to achieve one of their goals, like, for instance, if you don't get an A on a test, you know, it's a, I, we don't come down on you. We don't yell at you. We don't punish you if you don't do well. What we try to do is figure out why you didn't do well and focus on that and improve that. So it's a, it's a matter of, yes, you did great. Here's a pat on the back. Keep up the good work. Or you didn't do well. You fell short of the goal. Let's okay. This is why it happened. Let's go back and restudy. Let's let's go over what the material was. Let's figure out why we failed, and let's prepare you so that the next time that you encounter this, not only will you know that material, but the next set of material that you're introduced to, you'll know how to study better because. As you continue to grow, your your brain is changing and your ability to re retain knowledge and how you retain knowledge is evolving. So how you learned five years ago is very different than how you're going to learn today or five years from now. So as parents, it's important for us to help you recognize those changes and how to learn how to learn when it comes to scholastics. Mm -hmm. Do you find that mommy and daddy are encouraging when it comes to motivational things like that yeah you guys are definitely one of the larger motivating factors um you always say try your best and usually my best is bringing out a's of course you don't like force me to get a's and you don't get upset entirely if i get b's um so i definitely say that you guys are very motivating and a lot of what um why I try bringing home A's is thanks to you guys. So I definitely think you guys are pretty big motivating factors. Now, are there any areas where mommy and daddy can improve how we motivate you? Um, I don't really think so. Um, like I said, a lot of the motivation comes from what I my expectations of me are your expectations are actually significantly lower than mine um so and your motivation tactics are fine i don't think you really need to improve too much on them so there's one facet you really don't need to worry about okay well good i'll stop worrying about it then <laughs> we're gonna take another break and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the seven secrets of motivating teens Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. 
We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about motivation. And now we're going to be discussing the seven secrets to motivating teens. And this information comes from a website called understandingteenagers.com. Um, so the first one we have is what, what's in it for me? This is the most important motivational learning. <laughs> Sorry. This is the most important motivational. <sighs> this is the most important motivational ingredient of them all. If your teen does not understand what the task has to do with them or their well-being, then it will be a struggle for them to find the desire to carry it out. Teenagers long to feel significant. They want to demonstrate to themselves and the world that they matter and are capable of making a difference. Many of the problems teens encounter today is because their desire to be significant is ignored or, dis or diminished. If your teenager understands the value of them, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if your teenager understands the value to them of the task, you will have uh, you will have little problem motivating them to do it. It's important to note that making their parents' life easier is typically not a high value motiv high value motivator for teens. Your teenager might not see how vacuuming the carpet makes any difference to their life. So maybe this wasn't the best chore for them if you can't help them find value in it. Give your teen chores that they will see the value in doing. So, all right, let me ask you, how important on a scale of 1 to 10 is what's in it for you and your motivation? I would definitely say um, for my motivation, I kind of keep it around a five six is range. All right, so it's not dominating, but it's significant, right? Yeah, like, a lot of it isn't entirely, like, what's in it for me. Part of it is, and part of it's just, like, either the well-being of it, the fact that it'll make you guys happy, um, or just the fact that I feel like doing it. Okay, I'll buy that. So the second thing that we have is let them have a say. If your teenager feels like all they're being asked to do is to fit into your agenda, your timetable, and conform to your way of doing things, they're not going to be terribly motivated. When parents give the reason, because I told you so, they create a demotivating environment. Developmentally, teenagers are seeking to establish themselves as their own person, independent from their parents. Give your teenager a say in what and how things are done. If your teenager has had a say in setting the agenda and the timetable, they will be much more motivated to participate. Is this true? Do you feel more motivated to participate if you have a say in what you're doing? Um, I would, I mean, yeah, probably. Um, in certain things, when I'm given a say, I'm a lot more motivated in, um, doing something because I get the chance to pipe in about it. Um... And I definitely think that could be for other teens as well because they get to um, pick what they want to be motivated in and basically having a say in doing something definitely gives them the motivation that they really want to do that one, partic uh, one particular thing. Makes sense. So the next one we have is let them learn from failure. When parents constantly step in, step in and rescue their teens from failing, they undermine their teenager's ability to grow up. No parent wants to see their kids fail, but it, it, but it's, 
but it is through failure that we grow and learn it to improve. Th- what gives a task significance is the consequences or what it or what is at stake if it doesn't get done. When parents pre- prevent teens from experiencing the consequences of failure, they rob a task of its significance and hence their teenager's motivation to do better next time. If your teen is responsible for taking the trash out every week and they don't get it done, then they become responsible for managing the mess and overflowing bins for the following week. They will learn more from this than by a parent repeatedly nagging them at 11 p.m. the night before or doing it for them. Similarly, if your teen chooses not to study for an exam and fails, they are more likely to be motivated next time. Parents can maximize these opportunities by asking questions rather than giving lectures. Discuss with your teen how they feel about the outcome, what they might do differently next time, and ask if there is anything they need from you to help them. So what is our family philosophy on failure? Mistakes are... It's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Right. And you'll learn more from your mistakes than you will from your successes. So with that in mind, how do do mommy and I handle failures with you? you, Are we there as a safety net to prevent you from failing? Or do we kind of let you go down that path and figure it out yourself and then help you along the way? You definitely help me to at least prevent me not to fail, but when I do end up failing, you do definitely um, chime in and make sure you ask me questions on how will I prevent this in the future. So Yeah, and, and there aren't that many failures that you have that you can learn from, so <laughs> there's not too many instances <laughs> to, to really educate yourself and motivate from there. Yeah. But and that's a good thing, though, right? Yep. So number four is to help them to remember, which I'm really the least qualified person in the world for that because my memory is terrible. (laughs) It's not always the case that teenagers don't do things because they're not motivated. Often they fail to follow through simply because they forget. I'm guilty of that on a regular basis myself. (laughs) The reality is teenagers, particularly younger ones, are hardwired to forget. Their brains are reforming and haven't yet got all the bits joined up. With all the stuff going on in their life, it's very easy for teenagers to get distracted and forget. They need help to remember what they committed to do and to get organized. It's important to point out that constant verbal reminders for parents, also referred to as nagging, is not the solution. If you nag your teenager, you make it about your agenda and about keeping you happy. This does not help your teenager's motivation. In fact, nagging is a great demotivator. Teaching your teens to be organized and remember is part of what parents need to do. Work with your teen to develop methods of remembering that don't require you to be involved. Use visual aids uh, such as charts, color-coded rosters, or timetables and place them in obvious places. Help your teen create routines in their weeks that help them to establish patterns. Leave little hints around the house about a task that needs to be completed. Get them to use an app or a program on their computer, phone, or tablet as part of the reminding process. Now, being guilty of having a terrible memory myself, I'll tell you that I'm always looking for new things to help me remember. Usually, mommy is... You know, my phone is my first secondary memory, and then mommy helps to reinforce all that stuff because mommy doesn't forget anything. Um, so she usually tends to keep keep me in line with the things that I need to do when I forget about things. How are we with you and remembering? First of all, how are you at remembering things? And then how are mommy and daddy at helping you to remember? So for remembering things... I don't think I'm as bad as you, but I'm not as good as mommy. 90-year-old senile men are not as bad as me, so I think you're okay there. <laughs> I mean, I still have problems with remembering. Um, there are many instances where I forget things um, or, you know, just lose them over time, and I don't really remember them until they're brought up again, and I have to try and remember them. Um, 
So, with you guys and helping me remember, um, kind of like you hinted at, Mommy is more or less where I go if I need to remember something. Yeah, Mom, Mommy is really the, the, the supplemental brain that we all need here. Now, do we, do we nag you, or is it more helpful than nagging? I'd say you don't nag me anymore. I would kind of consider Laundry Misses You being nagging. And while I still did it, it definitely did not put me in a good mood whenever you said it. You're absolutely right. But I was doing that deliberately, too, just to yeah. you know, poke, poke a, a stick, stick in, in your cage. cage. Yep, that's what I do. Yeah. You'd be surprised how motivational it can be having a stick poked in your cage. Mm. Try doing that to a lion sometime and see how that works out for you. <laughs> yeah. What's the next thing we've got? The next thing we have is make it achievable. Sometimes it's the size of the task that teenagers find hard. It isn't that they don't want to do it, but rather that they don't know where to start and it all looks too hard. If your teen is putting off getting started... It can sometimes be helpful to sit down with them and to find out how they are feeling about getting it done. Do they know where to start? Do they feel like they will never be able to do it so they can't but so they can't be bothered starting? Maybe they feel scared about failing. Whatever the reason, offering to help your teen think through a process for giving for eh, for getting the job done could be just the thing they need. Break the task up into a series of smaller, achievable tasks with shorter deadlines. Teenagers often struggle with long-term planning, but respond well to more in intimate time, immediate, immediate. immediate time horizons. By helping your teen come up with a series of small steps, you, emp you empower them to work their way through the task. Now, this sounds very much in line with our philosophy around here, you know, Break a big task into smaller tasks. Go for the low-hanging fruit first and get all the stuff done that you can get done quickly. And then we'll go back and we'll figure out how we're going to do everything else. It's, it's about organization, right? Mm -hmm. How organized do you think you are and how do, how do you think that level of organization helps to motivate you to get things done? I'd say I'm decently organized, and I would say that the organization can definitely be a good motivating factor, especially in projects. Um, I take it one step at a time with projects, um, and I, and if there is something I'm somewhat struggling on, I skip it and go to the next part that I need to work on, kind of similar with quizzes and tests. Right. Um, I try to keep an organized balance between them all. That's good. That's, uh, that's the best way to do it. So number six is provide incentives. We kind of talked about this. We touched on it a little bit earlier. This is a more specific example of what's in it for me philosophy, but it's worth spelling out separately. As mentioned earlier, not all tasks have an obvious intrinsic consequence that can be used as motivation. Some school assignments are just there to be done, and some chores don't seem to make a great deal of difference to the immediate quality of life. Even more importantly, some tasks can't be linked to larger outcomes in a way that motivates a teenager. For teenagers who lack confidence and or natural ability, the motivation to do better in certain subjects at school can be very hard to find. Likewise, for the teen who is not naturally coordinated or athletic, the motivation to participate in physical activity can be hard to find. I feel targeted. <laughs> <laughs> For these types of instances, providing an additional incentive can help generate motivation when otherwise there would be none. By offering rewards for effort, improvement, or participation, you reinforce in your teenager the values of trying and perseverance rather than rewarding the act of giving up or resigning. Learning what your teenager's love language, which we'll talk about in a future podcast, Learning what your teenager's love language is can be a great help in this regard. We'll discuss the concepts and principles of love language in a future podcast, but basically knowing what your teen best responds to is important. Does your teen respond well to encouraging words, gifts, quality time, physical affection, or some other form of affirmation? Knowing what type of incentive your teen will respond to best 
will increase their motivation and responsiveness. What motivates you the most that we, what reward that we give you? Um, cold, hard cash. <laughs> um, I guess it would be a mixture of encouraging words, uh, quality time in some instances, um, and, you know, maybe actually. And money. Yeah, and money. <laughs> Cash is definitely in there somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's a there's a tangible reward when you, if that motivates you to do as well as you do, then it's entirely worth it because you, you, you do excellent in school. I, we don't have any complaints about you as a student at this point. If that's because you get paid for every A you bring home every marking period, then so be it. You know, that's there to motivate you, and it seems to be working. What's the last one that we have? The last one we have is make it fun. This motivational principle applies to people of all ages, not just teens. Most people are more motivated to do something fun rather than something boring. Fun is the key ingredient to getting teens active and motivated to participate in social activities. If you want your teen to get out of the house, get active, and make new friends, then explore with them what activities it is they enjoy doing and encourage them to do it. Remember, what you enjoy may not be what your teen enjoys. Make sure, uh, be sure to, f to show interest and value whatever it is that your teen considers interesting and fun. Teenagers, particularly boys, respond to competition. No matter how men mental the task menial menial uh, the task could be mental too i guess but <laughs> no matter how menial the task any job can be transferred into a passion filled activity if there is a competitive aspect involved competition doesn't always require having others to compete against something sometimes young people respond to the challenge to do better to better their own previous efforts if your teenager can learn something by playing games, watching a movie, or searching the internet, then encourage them to do it. Using technology as a part of any task makes it instantly more appealing to young people today. Yeah, and I think you kind of have to be careful with the competitive aspect of things because a lot of times when teens get involved in competitive things, most competitions have a winner and a loser, and being the loser can be a very demotivational thing. And that drives over competitiveness. So instead of it being a fun exercise, it becomes a vicious cutthroat, I have to win at all costs type of exercise. And then you're getting into teaching the wrong values to, to teens at that point. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. So how important is it for you for activities to be fun? Do you find fun activities more appealing or motivating for you to get involved in? Yeah, uh, and I've noticed that with certain projects, particularly the ones that where I do art in, I definitely feel a lot more motivated than something where I have to study like 186 flashcards that's for a, a test. That's a very good point there. If it's something that you enjoy, there's a natural motivation there for you to do it at that point in time until you run into the situation where you're doing too many fun projects and some of them are falling by the wayside and you're not following up on them, then you need to motivate yourself to organize those projects a little more cohesively. Yeah. So that was all we had as far as the research went. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll get your closing remarks. Okay. Go for your closing remarks. Alright, so to everyone out there, I wanted to say that teen motivation is very important. Having your, teams be, eh, having your teens be motivated is one of the most important assets to them. And, it will and there are definitely some difficulties and challenges that will come from trying to motivate your teens. It will, not all of the things we listed will apply to your teen, so you might want to just try out some of them. If they work, great. If they don't work, try something else. Um, I would definitely say that it is very important to keep teens motivated because there are definitely instances where demotivation can have very big consequences. 
Sage words as always. I thank you. Do you find yourself any more motivated now than before this podcast started? Um. Not really. Huh? <laughs> no, it's okay. It wasn't meant to motivate you. It's okay. It was for the audience's sake. Um, that's all we had today. Before we go, uh, I do want to uh, invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. Audio versions are available as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all the network's podcasts are listed as Insights into Things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, any place you can get a podcast. Uh, also, uh, if you can, email us. Give us some show some uh, show suggestions. We're looking for new topics. Tell us how we're doing. Give us some feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are a Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free Twitch Prime monthly subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. Audio versions of the podcast can be found online at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast and Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all those in all of our podcasts at our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.